What, what we noted in the study of about uh, 2,000 uh, children in the pediatric cardiomyopathy registry was that um, they have improved survival in the more recent era, but the transplantation rates seem to be about the same. So our hypothesis, as much as we can tell from the study, is that they're doing better, um, hopefully from the advancements we've had in technology and the care of these patients after diagnosis. Most children with dilated cardiomyopathy um, can live long, healthy lives. However, about 40% of them uh, will be transplanted or die within five years of diagnosis. So it is a very severe diagnosis that sometimes leads to transplantation. You know, one of the reasons why I went into this field was that um, children can present with these diseases for very different reasons. The vast majority of them uh, are born with these diseases, and so uh, it makes diagnosis difficult at times because um, it's very rare, so it's not suspected in uh, most cases. Um, but overall, we, as a community, we've gotten a lot better at treating these patients, uh, both in terms of medications and the other advanced therapies that we have. I think the, th the things that have come along in the last decade that have really improved the outlook for these children have to do with the artificial um, heart machines or uh, mechanical circulatory support devices that are able to keep these children stable while we await transplantation. The most common things I tell my colleagues who are on you know, the front lines uh, as pediatricians is that um, you know, if you have the patient that doesn't fit into a typical childhood diagnosis such as asthma uh, or chronic abdominal pain, something as simple as an x-ray or an EKG can usually pick up these diagnoses. Well, with most diseases, the earlier you diagnose, the better the outcome. So if we are able to pick up one of these rare diagnoses such as dilated cardiomyopathy, we can usually uh, uh, treat them before it gets more advanced uh, and, more importantly, can improve survival. I think compared to the adult population, uh, the risks are relatively similar because we do a lot of the same techniques and a lot of the same medications. Where pediatric patients differ in terms of transplantation has to do with the availability of donors, uh, which is much harder. Uh, the devices, um, the mechanical circulatory support devices, are um, not as adept at taking care of children, so we have more complications. And obviously the factors that go along with children, compliance issues and having a good social network to take care of these children that are very medically fragile.